Welcome to the body imaging cases. This 28-year-old lady presented with acute abdominal pain, which was so severe, relieved only by morphine, associated with nausea and vomiting. Previously, she had history of intermittent shortness of breath, hair loss, pain of the small joints of the hands, mouth tightness, chronic constipation, and anemia. This unenhanced CT shows dilated esophagus filled with oral contrast agent, can be traced down to the stomach without lesions at the cardia, and this contrast enhanced CT shows mild bilateral pleural effusion, ascites, small spleen, with a focal splenic lesion, poor enhancement of the pancreas for this phase of contrast enhanced CT, dilated edematous small intestine with normal colon, normal ileocecal valve, terminal ileum, and terminal ileal loops. The ovaries were large, and this was consistent on ultrasonography with morphological polycystic ovaries. And enlarged external iliac lymph nodes. Because of increase in chest symptoms and the development of more pleural effusion on chest X-ray, CT of the chest has been performed, and here at the lower part of the neck, it shows enlarged lymph nodes, most pronounced at the left posterior triangle. Increase in the amount of bilateral pleural effusion compared to the abdominal CT. Bilaterally enlarged axillary lymph nodes. Subpleural pulmonary infiltrate at the anterior parts of both upper lobes. Enlarged breast parenchyma. and the bilateral basal atelectasis. The examination has been extended to include the whole neck, considering the presence of the lymph nodes at the lower part of the neck. And here we see contrast agent at the right lateral sinus. The left lateral sinus is not showing contrast agent, suggesting it's chronic thrombosis. Again, here we see the chronic thrombosis of the sigmoid sinus and a recent thrombus inside the right internal jugular vein. And here we have the enlarged lymph nodes, again, most pronounced at the left posterior triangle. Numerous clinical data and numerous radiological observations. Where shall we start? We start here from the most clinically important issue, which is the severe abdominal pain relieved only by morphine. We may tend to think that we are dealing with mechanical intestinal obstruction here because we have the classical sign of the presence of normal sized terminal ileum and dilated rest of the intestine. So we assume that we have an, a mechanically obstructive agent at the transition between the two. There is only one feature against that which is the edema of the dilated intestinal loops. 
In mechanical intestinal obstruction, usually these loops are healthy and they suffer only the mechanical obstruction. But in this case, these are the diseased parts of the intestine, whereas the normal sized terminal ileal loops are the normal part. So it is functional rather than mechanical obstruction and how we put this functional intestinal involvement together with the many clinical and radiological observations. The observations marked in orange here are recognized features of systemic lupus erythematosus. The systemic lupus may have serocytis, lymphadenopathy, thromboembolism, and autoimmune reaction in certain organs. So if we look here at the bilateral pleural effusion and the ascites, they belong to the serocytis. The lymph nodes in various locations are belonging here and the thrombosis of the left lateral and sigmoid sinuses and the recent thrombus inside the right internal jugular vein belong here in the thromboembolism. The small spleen belongs also to the thromboembolism because it is caused by systemic emboli. Now, where do our most important feature of dilated edematous small intestine belong. Is it due to serocytis overlying these small intestinal loops, thromboembolism, or autoimmune reaction inside the intestinal wall? Let us see the three-dimensional reconstruction here of the vessels. Here we see the small intestinal loops dilated and edematous. And this is a reconstruction in three dimension of the superior mesenteric artery and vein. This is the superior mesenteric artery. And here is the superior mesenteric vein. We see that all the venous tributaries uh, are normal. Nothing is occluded. We have incidentally a replaced right hepatic artery coming from the superior mesenteric artery here. However, the fact that these veins and venules are filling normally with contrast agent doesn't mean that they are not the cause of the intestinal disease. What counts more is how fast they are filling with contrast agent. And for this purpose, CT and geography is not the best because its time resolution is poor. We did here an MRI for this patient and as part of the examination there was a fast dynamic gadolinium enhanced MRI in the coronal plane. This serves well as an angiography. Although the spatial resolution is poor, the temporal resolution is good and here you see the superior mesenteric artery and here you see the ileocecal venous return a relatively fast ileocecal venous return to the superior mesenteric vein by the time none of the jejunal and ileal loops are returning contrast agent and in the subsequent phase you see starting return from the ileal and the jejunal loops. So this difference in venous return tells us that the circulation in all these parts corresponding to the edematous and uh, diseased intestine is poor and the venous return from this part which has the normal uh, sized small intestine is good and this tells us that the reason here for the intestinal involvement in this case of systemic lupus erythematosus is vascular involvement at the level of the very small vessels whether arterioles capillaries or venules whether this is purely thromboembolic or associated with vasculitis 
but the vascular element here is the most important and not the autoimmune reaction because autoimmune reaction would not discriminate between one vascular domain and the other. Now, fine with the orange encoded observations. Now, what about the dilated esophagus and the subpleural pulmonary infiltrate at the anterior parts of both upper lobes? If we put these two features together and together with the clinically evident mouse tightness, we need to consider systemic sclerosis, scleroderma, in our diagnosis. The mouse tightness was tested clinically by the three-finger test. This is asking the patient to put three middle fingers of her hand inside her mouth vertically. Patients with mouse tightness due to scleroderma cannot do that. So we have here evidence of systemic sclerosis. And if you remember from case two in this series, we have presented this sign of sub pleural pulmonary infiltrate at the anterior parts of the upper lobes as a diagnostic sign of systemic sclerosis. This is appreciated better, of course, on the three-dimensional imaging. So we'll have a look at the patient's chest. We see here the larger breasts encoded in yellow. The enlarged axillary lymph nodes encoded in red. And here, even before removing the bony thoracic cage, we can see the parallel band sign of scleroderma. So here we have a very strong evidence of scleroderma. So what about the rest of the features? We have here poor pancreatic enhancement, and this is a feature of autoimmune pancreatitis, which has also been proved in this case. We have polycystic features of the ovaries due to polycystic ovary syndrome. So we are dealing here now with four disease entities. The focal splenic lesion is easy to explain. This is an incidental finding of a benign focal splenic lesion. Most probably it is a scent of the spleen. And because the lesion is sclerosed, it will not suffer the reduction of volume. The normal spleen around it is suffering when the thromboembolic event happens. And the diagnosis here is a mixed connective tissue disease, systemic lupus erythematosus, and systemic sclerosis. What is also termed overlap syndrome between these two autoimmune diseases. Plus autoimmune pancreatitis and polycystic ovaries, which are recognized associations with mixed connective tissue disease. We learn here that mixed connective tissue disease may present with overlapping features of systemic lupus erythematosus and scleroderma or systemic sclerosis, the so-called overlap syndrome. Thromboembolic disease is an important feature of systemic lupus erythematosus. Systemic lupus erythematosus may present with acute intestinal ischemia due to thromboembolic process. Early venous return on fast dynamic MRI angiography is an important sign to recognize domains of fast circulation versus domains of slower circulation. A small spleen due to repeated embolic infarctions may occur in systemic lupus erythematosus. So for those of us who think that this is a sign exclusively seen in sickle cell disease. No, it may be seen in systemic lupus erythematosus. More frequently, of course, we may see splenic rupture, but uh, splenic atrophy due to repeated infarction is a recognized feature of systemic lupus.
The features of systemic lupus are versatile and they are distributed uh, in categories like serocytes, lymphadenopathy, thromboembolism, and autoimmune reaction in certain organs. But two clinically insignificant features may help the radiologist to make the diagnosis, the bilaterally enlarged axillary lymph nodes. These are very unlikely to be seen in other diseases, unlike the rest of the features of systemic lupus erythematosus. And together with it, the large size of the parenchyma of the breasts. Of course, the size of the parenchyma of the breast in the female is very variable, but certain features may help the radiologist distinguish between the normal big breasts and the subclinical mastitis in lupus. Among them, of course, is the association with axillary lymph nodes and the disproportionate size of the breast parenchyma in relation to the breast fat, because the normally large breasts may have proportionate relation to the breast fat as well. Of course, this sign should be recognized in absence of pregnancy and in absence of lactation because they may cause similar features. Features of systemic sclerosis or scleroderma include esophageal dilatation and the parallel band sign at the upper lobes of both lungs, in addition, of course, to the mouse tightness present in this case.